more important than people. Now, I'm doing this with two people in mind, especially the moment. You've got John over here, who has far too many astronomical accessories. <laughs> and then we've got my favorite vertebrate paleontologist <coughs> over here, Mike O'Dowd, who, when hearing that I was in the Woodward Dream Cruise as a participant, contributor, said, well, I didn't know you could do it on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? I point out to Conrad O'Dell that a car guy is just a car guy, but in Spanish, the word caballero is both horseman and gentleman. Anybody can be a car guy in a 45-year-old car with the idiot light flickering that's going to overheat. But a horseman is a gentleman, not some slob. <laughs> now, where was I? Roy Lou. <coughs> Eke homo. For those who are a little short on the Greek, behold Lame. the man. <laughs> Everything's coming up, roses and daffodils. Everything's coming up, tinsel and Santa Claus. I defy you to load any of your apps on this baby. <laughs> it's like thistle down on steel plate. Behold the newly reconditioned and operational John Ross telescope mount. The tripod my dad made for me in 1963 to take the weight of my brand new 8-inch F8 Newtonian. And this is something I started up at Cadillac West for my <coughs> old, mid-1960s, 5-inch uh, F13 to the plate glass mirror, which I made. So, my dad had two tri uh, two counterweights machined out in the plant where he worked. Uh, this is the smaller of the two. And to give credit where it is due, he built the mount for me, and he built this tripod out of a scrap lumber in the basement with ordinary home craftsman type tools. He's not a woodworker, he's not a finished carpenter. And so, Given the style of the times, we immediately slapped on some oil garage paint, right? And then put two more layers of, uh, over the decades of some awful fortune deck. And that took a hell of a lot of stripping and sanding. Oh. Because I prefer the original wood, right? <gasps> I am in the middle of a lecture. <laughs> By my former friend Marlene B. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> so you go as Henry Ford would do in the old days. You go out to the barn and you find some old wooden box that's sitting there with mouse turds and everything, and raccoon urine all over it. It takes a little work to bring it back. <coughs> Went to Optech Incorporated, made some of the fittings. Those of you who don't remember Optech Incorporated shows how new you are to this whole enterprise. <laughs> and duly and very belatedly put a memorial plaque on this thing for my father. So this is what real astronomers use back in the heroic era. Russell W. Porter times, right? right. Amen, Jim. Right. Porter. I mean, one of the slides I have may be a picture of that very story. That's right. <laughs> Porter may have illustrated this in the, same, in, in the same picture as this. So, this might come back to Kensington. I'm not so sure. 
The problem is, is that the 5-inch tube, is an F-13 tube, is so long, it dates back to the days of when we were using, well, you know, Ford Galaxy 500 convertibles and, you know, huge whale of a 1970 Electra. I can't get the damn thing in my Ford Gontour. <coughs> so we'll have to Take see. a convertible. Uh, the, the convertible was in the Dream Cruise. That was the deuce in the quarter. Yeah. But we'll see if I can bring the 5 inch and this thing to Kensington. Give me a hand here. <laughs> <laughs> The inimitable Gary M. Ross. Gary, can you leave that set up so we can take a look at it at the break? What's that, Joe? Can you leave that set up so we can take a look at the break? Well, it's going to be perfect.